Ah, General, please help this commission. What am I helping the commission with? Did I have helped this country by dismissing such people who are getting double salaries, getting salaries from the government and getting salaries from drug barons. What did you rely on in dismissing the petitioner? Can you tell the commissioner the report you relied on in dismissing the commissioner? What made you to dismiss the, uh, the petitioner? What have, 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 have the reports here? Yeah. What's the report? What form the basis of dismissing the petition? It's just based on information you get without investigating Look, uh, it. my dear lawyer, my learned friend, let me tell you. I was in the position to salvage the image of this country. And I left no stone unturned for doing it. Now, in salvaging and the image... wait a minute. I have no regret for anybody I dismissed in NDLE because they were not Nigerians. They were mercenaries in Nigerian land. So in dismissing them, did you act in accordance with the law that set you up? Absolutely. Go okay. and read Decree 48. Decree 48? Yes. Of which it year? gives the chairman the powers to hire and fire. In the 1990s, the Bamaye brothers were forced to reckon with in the Nigerian army, even though they did not see eye to eye. There was Lieutenant General Ishaya Bamaye, a highly decorated and consummate soldier who rose from the ranks to become Chief of Army Staff from 1996 till 1999. And then there was his older brother, Major General Musa Bamaye, who earned a reputation as the dreadful chairman of the Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency was also the acting administrator of Benue State in 1984. The NDLEA under General Musa Bami's tenor arrested Fela Anukolak Bokuti for the possession of illegal drugs. About 100 or more people, including minors, were arrested when the NDLEA raided Fela's popular shrine location. Bami noted that the NDLEA tried to rehabilitate Fela during a live television broadcast where Bamei and Fela disagreed on the harmful nature of marijuana. Fela Kuti filed a $1.2 million lawsuit for his unlawful arrest and detention by the NDLEA and reportedly has an unreleased composition titled Bamei, presumably about his encounter with the NDLEA and Musa Bamei. Musa Bamei reportedly feuded with his younger brother, Lieutenant General Ishaya Bamei, for years and sought redress from the Human Rights Violation Investigation Commission headed by Justice Chukudifu Oputa. Musa Bamei died on April 17, 2007, aged 58. In this episode, a former staff of the NDLEA, Adishakin Akimo, has petitioned his former boss, Major General Musa Bamei, for unlawful termination of his employment and violation of his fundamental human rights. If you enjoy our content, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and drop us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from, and we'll see you in the next video. Hi. Adesha King. Akemo. Do solemnly swear. That the evidence that I give before this honorable commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Yes, sir. Tell the honorable commissioners your full names, address, and what you presently do for a living. My lord, my, my name is Akimo Adeshaki Ayodoin. I live at number seven Mwewa Pale Street. Suru Leri Aguda, Lagos. Your occupation? Presently, I'm jobless. I'm, I'm a student. Please speak louder. They are recording you. Presently, I'm jobless. Um, before you became jobless, where were you working? I was working at the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Now, Mr. Adesakin, you sent a petition to this commission dated 24 July 1999, alleging unlawful violation of your rights by Major General Musa Bamai. Yes, my lord. If you see a copy of the petition, we'll be able to identify it. Yes, my lord. Please show him this. 
Is this a copy of the petition you sent to the commission? Yes, it is, by law. My lord, we apply to tender it in evidence. Mark it exhibit one. I apply that the petitioner be permitted to read it. It's just three pages. So. Petition against unlawful di dismissal and detention against retired Major General Musa Magana Bamai. With due respect, I wish to bring to your knowledge the inhuman treatment which befell me from the retired Major General Musa Bam Magana Bamai when he was. Please, you are being recorded. Speak louder and freely, please. I wish to bring to your knowledge. The human treatment which befell me from retired Major General Musa Magana Bamai when he was the chairman, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. My full name is Akimo Ayodo in Adishakin. I was an assistant narcotics superintendent in the Niger National Drug Law Enforcement Agency with personal file number 299 and warrant identity card number 001061. I joined the NDLA on the 15th of June 1991, 1990 as one of the pioneer officers. I have served in four zones, namely Nagos, Port Harcourt, Calabar, and Yola Zone. During my service in these zones, I have never been found wanting. My OCs, area commanders, and zonal commanders can testify to my dedication to duty honesty, contentment, and personal contribution to the success of the agency. It was in this respect that I was nominated a member of the first constituted strike force unit under the direct supervision of the chairman in September 1996. My problem started when the ADC to the chairman won Captain Auta and my OC in the strike force unit, DNS Suleiman Jadi, came to my residence on the 25th of June, 1997, at about 7.20 hours in the morning. I was told to, to get dressed immediately for an urgent operation, which I did and left with them in a white Pajot 504 saloon car. On our way, the ADC asked me if I had offended, if I had offended or had any problem with any officer at the agency. I said I could not remember having any problem or quarrel with any officer. He told me that the chairman, General Musa M. Bamai, ordered for my arrest. I was taken straight to the chairman's residence at George Street, Ikoi. I saluted the chairman, but he ignored me and spoke in, an, in Aousa to the ADC, who later took me to the headquarters at Fort Shaw Road, Ikoi. At the CSO's office, I was uncuffed and leg chained. At about two hours later, I was taken to the chairman's office by the ADC. I saluted him, the chairman, in complaint of the director of administration. Ignoring my salute, the chairman asked me of my state of origin and the, lo and the location of my parents. I told him I am from Mondo State and that my father is late, but my mother lives with me in Suruleri, Lagos. The chairman then ordered for my OC, DNS Suleiman Jadi. It was then I begged the chairman to know what was happening. He became angry, speaking in Aosa, and I remember he said, you bastard Nadeko people, I will make you an example. When my OC came in, a soldier was ordered to take me outside. About 30 minutes later, my OC came out of the chairman's office and informed me that the chairman ordered him to take me to Mina for detention and that I should not be told of the allegation against me. But after serious begging, he said that I was alleged by officer of the Joint Task Force of withholding information about one Alaji Sule, alias minister in Lagos Island. I became shocked because I had never known anybody by that name or had anything whatsoever to do with such 
either directly or indirectly. Meanwhile, the chairman had signed my dismissal letter and it was given to me in the cell. I was suspected, I suspected a setup by these officers in the Joint Tax Force, ANS Kankia, ANS2 Umar, and CNA Yusuf, for they had threatened to get me out of the strike force around April 97, just because I did discover the atrocities and negligence of duty. On the 26th of June 1997, I was driven to Mina by the ADC and my OC with two armed soldiers. At Mina's Zona office, I met the director of investigation, NS Midala Gaya, who was on a special investigation activity in the zone. He denied knowledge of my arrest, but promised to investigate the allegation. In view of this, I was optimistic, for I know that the investigation will reveal the truth, so I counted on God. To my surprise, I was still in detention even when the suspect, Alaji Sule, alias minister, has been arrested since 19, December 1997 and had denied knowing or having anything to do with me, either directly or indirectly, in his caution statement. The suspect is still in Kirikiri. After several appeals to the chairman by my mother, Mrs. Titilola A. Akemo, my first statement was obtained on the 18th of May, 1998, by Minazona Commander DNS Dambora. A second statement was obtained on the 26th of July, 1998, by the CSO of the zone. Throughout my detention, I was being fed once daily, which resulted in the death of one of the inmates in the cell with me around August 1998. I was released on the 7th of December 1998, having stayed for 17 months on a false allegation and without a prima facie case against me. I was refused proper medical treatment and visits even from my family. Presently, I'm jobless and my state of health is alarming. In view of this, I'm appealing to the Honorable Panel to, inves to investigate why I should be summarily dismissed on a false allegation and detained for 17 months without a prima facie case against me in view of restating my job and getting proper medical treatment. Yes, uh, Mr. Adeshaki, you said after your arrest, the yes. then chairman, General Bamai, ordered that you should be taken to MENA for detention. Yes, my lord. Where were you exactly detained? Is it a prison or NDLA cell? The, the NDLA cell in MENA. In MENA. Yes. Now, you also said in SB1 that it was only on the 18th of May, 1998, that's almost a year after your detention, that was the first statement was taken. Yes, my lord. So, throughout this period, you were detained for one year. Nobody took your statement. Nobody. Now, after the statement, do you know whether the matter was investigated? After the first statement, I was told that the matter would be investigated. But to my surprise, the matter was not actually investigated. My mother had to appeal. Even I wrote an appeal from the cell there. One of the, uh, one of the officers around there helped me. So I wrote an appeal letter from there to be taken to the chairman. And I don't know what came about it, but I think the second statement, which was actually taken in August, was due to the fact that there was a, uh, a committee that was set up to decongest the cells. So somebody came from Lagos uh, interviewing all the inmates in the cells, and I was one of them. So the man now said, uh, the zona commander then now told him that I'm chairman suspect, so they don't know what to do with me. So he had to say, okay, he will get to Lagos and know what is my case actually. So before, when he left, they came with the zona commander, and the CSO had to take my statement again, which was the second one. Then that was when I knew that they were trying to investigate it. And I was eventually released on the 7th of December. 
Yes, after staying 17 months yes. in, detention. in detention. Now, you said, was the matter investigated? Do you know of any reports issued after the investigation with regard to the allegation yes, against you? Yes, there is a case file on it. If, in fact, the, the officer that investigated the case was initially retrenched for recommending that I should be released and reinstated. What's the name of the officer? The officer is um, ADBC OK. okay. Did you so we, for the, um, but for the intervention of the uh, director of admin and the director of investigation then, that uh, they appeal to the chairman that why should the officer be retrenched? Because due to the fact before him, he recommended such. So the, re the retrenchment was now changed to demotion. It was now demoted. Now, did you see a copy of that report you issued to the officer that was uh, retrenched and subsequently demoted? Well, I, I happened to scan through, but it was not given to me. The, the case file is in the agency now. So it's, it's within in the, the Yes, uh, in the secret, um, secret office, um, uh, secret registry. What was the final findings of that report? The final finding was that... Uh, You said he saw, and the, the report was made in writing. Then that report should be here. You cannot give conclusion on what that report is. It's not possible. Bring the report. My Lord, uh, unless the learned senior is uh, trying to help the commission in bringing the report, because as it were, the petitioner is no longer with the NDLA. He is dismissed. And uh, moreover, this is a fact-finding mission. Let the commission, uh, the petitioner say whatever he has to say. If he has anything to contradict it, he will, his client is here. He will enter the witness box and contradict him. Please help the commission. So the, I, I, the, the, no, I, what I'm is the addition to his petition? He has read exhibit one. He was invited, arrested, in court, detained, dismissed. What else? Spent 17 years in detention. 17 months in detention. What else? Yes, my lord. We just want to get the other tiny records. Okay, um, we are you ever charged to court throughout this period of 17 months in detention? I was not, my lord. I was Nobody never charged, charged you? To court. In they fact, just... the recommendation on the case file was that there was no, no evidence to charge me to court. So, I'll... I, I will just... I, I, I'm sorry, my lord. I, I'm sorry. I know your lordship can admit any piece of evidence. Yes. But, 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 no, but the issue here, sir, the issue here is that particularly this is a situation where they subpoenaed my client, who is no longer in the service. What prevented them from subpoenaing the LDA officials to bring the file here? That would have uh, given them no difficulty whatsoever. Well, still it will go to a matter of weight, you know. I mean, it's true in a regular court, <laughs> you cannot contradict the contents of, uh, or you cannot give evidence of the contents of a document exactly. by oral evidence. You can't give oral evidence. But you see, this is a bit different. Uh, it's a fact finding. Everything goes in here. But the probative value is entirely a different matter. We agree. Yes. You know? Yes, you are talking about your detention for 17 months without any trial of any sort. Um, after, when I was released um, in November, uh, the chairman was removed. Musa, uh, Major, uh, Major General Musa Magana Bama was removed in December. And the new chairman, which was um, a AIG OO Novo, mm -hmm recommended that a panel should be, a committee should be set up to look into the re, uh, retirement, uh, retrenchment, and unlawful dismissal of officers, which the committee sat and looked into so many cases, not even only my own. And I was recommended for a statement. I have a copy of the report of the committee here. So the committee re recommended that you should be reinstated? Yes. Have you been reinstated now? No, up to now I've not been reinstated. The, uh, the chairman then was a, wanted to be doing it in batches because we, uh, the officers retrenched unjustly and dismissed were so many during Major, uh, Major General Musa Magana Bamai. So only 20 were, were reinstated then. 
Um, but before they could start the second batch, the chairman was removed. And the present chairman, Mr. Bello, is still promising that he will do the final statement, but up to now. Yes, uh, with reference to your detention, so it was only after General Bamai was removed that the issue of your detention was even looked into. No, before he was removed. Okay, that was he was the person that set up the pre uh, the, the congestion committee. The, uh, well, I don't know who set up the. I just I, I met the man. The man came to to Mina. So he now said he is one of the member of the committee that is discongesting the the cells. So I told him my story. But the zonal commander said I'm chairman suspect, so they don't know. They don't even have record about me. All they know, all they have in their station diary was for me to be detained there. Yeah. Were you tortured physically or any other form while in detention for 17 months? Well, actually, I was, I was in the cell with handcuff and leg chain, which I complained bitterly about. And the initial um, zonal commander of that zone, I've forgotten his name now. In fact, I, I started shouting in the cell that he had to say he would go to Lagos and tell the um, uh, chairman that I'm giving him trouble. I said, well, if you cannot take care of me here, you have to tell the chairman, let them take me back to Lagos. They don't allow visitors, they don't allow my, uh, my people to come and visit me. They don't give me proper, uh, in fact, there was a time I was ill that I, I, I was rushed to the general hospital there. So all the records are there. The station diary was there when I was moved out, when I was brought in. Right, very well. So you refer to the report that recommended that you should be reinstated. Yes, you have I, a copy have, of yeah, it. I have a copy of it. Well, Lord, we apply to tender it in evidence. Uh, Bring it. Can we see it? Be two. As my Lord pleases. My Lord, that is all for the witness. Huh? Cross examined. Can I have the first exhibit? Okay. Mr. Adi Shokin. Yes, my lord. You were a senior officer in NDLA. Yes, I was, the, I was an assistant superintendent of narcotics. Yes, that is a, a senior position. Yes. Yes. In your position then, if somebody had reported that A was a drug baron, and that one of your officers was aiding him, and you were asked to investigate, would you call him for interrogation? If I was yes. told that one of my officers is aiding a drug barrel, yes. would I have... And you are told to investigate the matter. Would you have called the officer for interrogation? Well... Or you just leave him in the house to be sleeping? I would have called him to find out, probably on just on a friendly basis, if he knows somebody like that, or maybe he has information about the person. Thank you. In other words, it was the duty of NDLA to investigate such reports by inviting those who are accused those who are accused of... That is, NDA has the duty to investigate uh, issues that border on drug abuses. Drug-related offenses. Yes, yes, it has. Yes, my lord. And one of the ways you can carry out such investigation is that you invite those the informants uh, tell you were involved. Yes. Yes. Now, you made a written statement on the 26th day of September 1998 yes. as regards your detention. 26th day of 
September 1998. 1998. Yes. Please take a look at this, whether this is the report, a copy of it. Is this by handwriting? Our Lord, I humbly seek to tender it in evidence. Exit but, three. As your Lordship pleases. So, please, can I use it? Please read out page. Read out the entire exhibit three. Having been duly cautioned, I wish to state as follow. It was on the twenty fifth Louder, louder. It was on the twenty fifth June nineteen ninety seven, while I was about getting ready for work. My OC DNS Silaman Jadi and ADC Captain Aukta came to my house at about past seven in the morning. The captain ordered me to get ready quickly and join them in the PJ five oh four Salunka for an urgent assignment. While we were on the third Milan Bridge, the captain told me that I was under arrest by the chairman's order. I couldn't understand, and I asked. None of them could explain to me why, for they denied knowledge of my offense. I was then taken to the chairman's house and later to the office. At the headquarters, I was taken to the chairman's office, where the chairman only asked of my state of origin and the location of my parents. I tried to ask of my offense. But the chairman ordered the soldier by his office to take me out. out. It was after my OC DNS S. Jadi came out of the chairman's office that he told me that I was alleged of leaking information to one Sule, Sule alias minister. This made me to remember the fact that I had on two occasions reported one informant, Frank Amobi, to the former DI. Mr. Tony, Tony Ray, about his impersonation, but when the informant was questioned, he was covering his atrocities by lying against me that I know the Sule minister. Secondly, I had on one occasion been requested by the Joint Tax Force officer to help in locating the whereabouts of the said minister. Thank you, sir. By that XB3, Yes. It was one Frank Amobi. Yes, Frank Amobi. Yes, that framed you up. I said you were aiding a drug baron. Am I correct? By yes. your statement. Yes, okay. Now take a look at your exhibit one, the petition. Page two of your petition. Uh, line 17 to 24, that is from I suspected the setup. Can you read it to the Honorable Commission? Yes, I suspected the setup by these officers in Joint Tax Force. ENS I ANS 1 Kankia, ANS 2 Umar, and CNA Yusuf, for they are threatening to get me out of the strike force around April 97, just because I discovered the atrocities and negligence of duty. Now, which of these two reports now? The one you wrote that it was a Frank Amobi, or the one in Exhibit 1 that you said. Uh, Thank you and so on, framed you up. If you, could, if you see that SB3, I please, mentioned the joint please, tax please. force. Look, it simple. was two together. I mentioned hold the on. joint tax force. Simple, hold on. Yes. Hold on. Which one first? You, you answer, then you explain. Which one do you want the Honorable Commission to believe? The two together, the, the Frank Amobi is an informant to this joint tax force. Okay, hold on. Now, here you said the Yusuf and so on threatened you because you uh, 
wanted to report them as regards the atrocities and negligence of duty. Yes. Amobi's own, in, in the case of, uh, of Amobi, it is because he was impersonating. That's what you said. I, that was what first. Uh, that was what I, I first discovered. I was impersonating. Okay. I later now find out that good, he good. was uh, an informant to on, them. Hold on. Now you want the tribunal, the commission, to believe the two. Yes. Thank you. Now, when you were detained, now it is your own duty to volunteer a statement. It's not for NDLA to force you to make a statement. You have been working there for long. Normally, when you arrest somebody or you want to take somebody into detention, there must be an allegation against him. There must be a reason why you want to even, the reason why you arrest somebody. Look, 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 my question is, you say you had worked there, you were a senior officer there. Yes. Do you force somebody to make a statement? But when you were not, there? I was not even asked anything. Even oh, the chairman said I should not be told what the allegation is against me. Answer this first. Is it your duty to force somebody to make a statement? You don't force somebody to make, but you, yeah, you, you appeal you. to the person to make statements. Thank you. That statement you made on 28th September, is it? Let me have it. That, that statement you made on 28th September, like 26th. you said, 26th, yes. was the one you made voluntarily. That's what you said. The two statements, I made them, all my statements, I made them voluntarily. Uh -huh. Therefore, you were not right. When you said in your petition that they kept you without making you make a statement. When I said I was kept without making a statement, in fact, I, I, the, 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 the trouble I said I was making with the, initial, with the former zonal commander was that why was I kept here without obtaining statement from me, without even telling me what was the allegation? That was it. Before they now eventually came that somebody should come and obtain my statement. Now, Mr. Is it Adeshokan, you were released when Major General Musabami was still the chairman of NDLA. Yes, my lord. That was after the statement was made. Yes, sir. Yes, my lord. Thank you. Normally, even when you were there, you don't release people until after investigation. That was the normal pr pr practice. It depends if an exhibit is involved. Yes. Yes, and if it warrants that the suspect be, they be left to go home, then meanwhile you continue the investigation. Yes. Probably you still have to put him on surveillance. Yes, that is if it warranted. Yes. Yes. Now, and normally, you ask him to go home, perhaps after he might have made his own written statement. His own written statement. Yes, like you did. Yes. Thank you. Now, you said you are now a student. Yes. Yes, my lord. You have been going for lectures normally, like all other students. I'm a part-time student. Y yes, you have been going for your lectures. Yes. Normally. Yes, Thank you. Now, you have not shown to this honorable commission that you were treated for any injury by any medical doctor? You have not? After my release or now, in have detention? You? Have you? After my release or in detention? Now. Have now. You? Yes. 
I have not showed to the Honorable Commission. Thank you. But the report is there when I was in detention. Thank you, sir. Where is the report? It's no, there. it's with them. Finally, you will agree with me that NDLA would have been wrong if, after the allegation that you were aiding a drug baron, you were just left like that to continue working there without questioning. No question again, my I'm saying, will it have been right for NDLA to have just left you when a report was made that you were aiding a drug baron? Well, would it have been normal to just say, oh, sit down and walk? The normal thing was for me to be questioned, then investigated, then if anything, if nothing against me, if uh, the evidence before them is not, um, is, is false, yes, I, sh I, I have, they, they ought to have left me, left me there walking, walking. Uh -huh. But the first thing is that, of course, you ought to have been interrogated first. Yes, I ought to have been interviewed. Thank you. Now you said Major General Musa Bame ordered for your arrest, torture, and detention. Mm. Mm, were, were you there when he made the order? The ADC told me. Thank you. ADC is a human being who can lie. <laughs> yes, well, he's a human being. Let, let the ADC say he's lying, but I saw it. Now, I put it to you that when you were questioned, you were asked to bring a bail, uh, somebody who could take you on bail, you could not get any. Who, nobody. In fact, <laughs> the, uh, the general wouldn't have even allowed you to, to, to go on bail. <laughs> Yes, because I, 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 there, there was a case of somebody that he posted the same day. He, in fact, the person received the, the letter of posting and, it, and his retrenchment letter the same day, just because he's from Mondo State. There are no people from Mondo State working in NDLA. There are several others. In fact, I, I, would, I, I happen to know another one that he posted just because he, he probably he missed a file. Um, an admin office he was working the admin. And those others are still working there? And those others are still working there. Thank you. Now, you also told the Honorable Commission that the ADC took you to Shore Road handcuffed, length chained, and so on. Yes, my lord. Major General Musambame was not there when all this happened. Normally, that is his, that is his way of, when you are taking a suspect to his office, he will tell you to handcuff and leg chain. At times, he do beat officers in his office. Yes. Several other officers can testify to this. You were not there. You, you don't know whether he did order the ADC to handcuff and chain you, since you were not there. Well, the ADC said I should be handcuffed and leg chained yes. and taken to the chairman. In fact, he led me to the chairman's office. That was his discretion. Well, that is for him to explain. And you have not seen any reason to apply to the tribunal to call the ADC or any of those you have mentioned, except Major General Musabame. I believe Major General Musabame would have, on his own part, bring the ADC to come and defend him if he did give him order or not. Finally, I put it to you that your allegation that you were ever tortured at all 
cannot be correct. We are keeping somebody in detention for almost a year without even asking him, uh, did you do this or not? That one is enough torture. Feeding him once in a day. Feeding a suspect once in a day is enough torture. What else do you want until they shoot me there? <laughs> now, you say the tribunals will order General Musa Bami to reinstate you. Are you still maintaining that? No, I'm, I, I said not for him. Well, presently, yes. I, I know he's no more the chairman, and I don't think he will ever go back there. Yes. So, <laughs> and, and NDLA is, has not been called by you. It's not a party to this petition. According to a petition, NDLA is not a party to the petition. Uh, well, according to my, I, I, I'm appealing to even the uh, honorable uh, this commission. This one now, answer. Yes. Is NDLA a party to the petition? Read it. Is it a party? Well, here it's against Musa Bamai. Thank you. That will be all for him, my lord. My lord, no re-examination. We want uh, General Bamai to come and no, explain no, 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 why no, no. he has to detain him for 17 months until trial. Uh, uh, with humility, my lord, we intend to address your lordship on, on the ground that from his own evidence, from the petition he has tendered, and the answers he has given under cross-examination. We don't see any reason for This is not an adversary oh my Lord. proceeding. If they want to call uh, General Bami, you will hear what he's going to say. Uh, I, I'm sorry, my Lord. We are not calling him. Are they calling him? Are you calling him? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, my lord. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't force him yet. He has to elect whether he wants to swear on oath or affirm. He has the right to, for election. I ask him, do you want to swear or affirm? Any. Doesn't matter. <laughs> he said any. <laughs> Aye. General Musa Bami, do solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give before this honorable commission shall be the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me Allah. Please, can I have the exhibits? Yes, who is leading him? I am, my lord. Well, I want to lead him, but it appears his counsel wants to. You called him. I called him, yes, my lord. <laughs> okay. I you him. lead him if you call him. Yes, sir. Do you know why he called him? <laughs> Do you know? If, if he wants me to, I'll be happy to. If you call him, let him lead him. <laughs> yes, uh, General. Please tell the Honorable Commissioners your full names, address, I, and your occupation. I came with my lawyer. Use the microphone. Use the microphone I, first. I think uh, 
Yes, use the yes, microphone. I'm using it, except if it is not on. It's on. Get it closer to your... What I said is that I came with my lawyer, so my lawyer, lawyer will lead me. You want your lawyer to lead you? Yes. All right. Okay. I... You can answer, sir. General, you are their witness. Okay, thank we will you. We ask you questions. So, Go General, ahead. please, can you now tell the Honorable Commissioners your full names, address, and occupation? I am Major General Retired Musa Bami, the Magayaki of Zuru. Uh, General, you have seen SB1, which was served on you, presented by the petitioner. I have seen the compaction of the falsehood. Do you know the petitioner in the SB1? I am seeing him maybe properly for the first time today. What do you mean properly? Can you explain? I wouldn't have known him if I met him anywhere else. Was he your Except that when he appeared here, they mentioned his name, and I knew, knew that was the petitioner, but... Personally, I don't know him. I've been heading an agency, not an individual. Very well. Now, do you recognize him as one of your officers at all? That's through his name. Well, he is a chemo. And one time I knew, I'm aware he served NDLA just as I did. Both of us are out. So, you now recognize him as one of your officers. He was one of your officers. Oh, I see. He might have been. Yes or no? He was one of your officers. It's not a matter of yes or no. It's a matter of whom I know. If I see those who related very closely to me within the agency, I would recognize them immediately. But somebody who is down the ladder, who committed an offense and was reported to me, I might not be able to identify him. General, you remember you just mentioned his name to the commission right now. You mentioned his name. I mentioned his name because it was mentioned here. And so, and do you identify that name was as one of your staff while you were heading the NDLA? It was mentioned in the petition. Yes. So, mentioning his name is not foreign. So are you saying that he was never a staff under your agency? I have not said so. So Don't what have you said? your own ideas. What have you Hansel, said? How many are there in that organization? If there were 300, will you know every one of them? No, my Lord, what are saying to, for him to know whether he was his staff? He has already how mentioned his name. How will he know if there are about 500 there? My Lord, if he a serious... never met him, he's seen him for the first time here. Yes, my Lord. My Lord, what are saying that if a serious report was made against the petitioner, before him, and he ordered his, his arrest. He's supposed to have rem remembered, and that's why he brought a statement and tendered here. That's exactly. So please tell, do you recognize him as, do you know at least by his name, as one of your staff while you are heading in Delhi? I don't know him you don't know except him. for here. Okay. Was, do you remember, General, while you are heading the Delhi, whether any report was made against any person by name Akimu Adeshaki? Well, one vivid case I do remember is clear. It has to do with... Speak up, please. Uh, they are recording you. It has to do with a drug baron that has been very slippery all along. And I want to cast your mind back to 1994 when I took over. NDLE was completely rotten. People who are serving and were being paid by government, and at the same time, they were serving drug barons. We couldn't have achieved anything by allowing that to continue. To me, I don't see any reason for his petition, because the issue is very clear. Akimo, when he was eventually arrested, it was the second time he was committing that offense. Hold it. First and foremost.
first and foremost. First and foremost, we have been trailing minister for two years. Who is the minister? Minister is a drug baron. The drug baron. Alliance. So Suleiman Somti, I can't remember his name. But this was a well-known drug baron that had infiltrated NDLE and he had people like them who will join the task force to go and arrest. And before the task force goes out, they will run ahead of the task force to tell Suleiman that the task force is on its way coming. This last one was very specific. I selected the people I wanted to go for that job. Having selected the people, I had a request from the DA of the American Embassy. And I opposed that request. It is that request that brought in Akimo. I did not assign that task to him. And eventually, the report that came to me from the task force was that Akimo did not go along with them. He went ahead, informed the minister that there was a task force coming to arrest him. I received this report in the office. I did not go along with them. And he came in for my interview. First, I cautioned him. This second time, he was thoroughly interviewed. But it was his task force that was responsible. I am not aware that Akimo was arrested and detained because what I did was dismiss him and I closed it there. So if he was under any detention or he was molested or anything of that nature, it was not to my knowledge. So he should look for those who molested him. General, and I, I want to add one thing. Akimo knows that 90% or 99.9% .9 of the people he is calling here are alive. For instance, my ADC. He serves in the Brigade of Guards. He's here. Jadi is still there. Why is he avoiding inviting these people to come and give evidence? It is not for the petitioner to invite, it's for the commission to invite witnesses. Well, Please, let's get to the detail. Now, this report of his involvement, you know, respect to the minister, was brought to your knowledge. What did you do? What step did you take immediately? The second one. I have already told you the steps. Please I took. explain because you. I said I dismissed him. You just dismissed him? Yes. You say he, you. He should present that letter to you. So I signed it. If I see it, I will identify it. So, did you dismiss him? You just dismissed him without uh, taking statements from him? What do you mean by taking statements? <laughs> they couldn't have reported to me without giving me ample evidence to convince me that he has committed that offense. No, did he make any statement to you? Ask him. No, your uh, 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 statement was tendered through your counsel, which probably came from you. That statement so, came from NDLE. That's what uh, he should have done. No, your counsel brought it, your lawyer. It came from you. Agreed. Hmm. So you took statement from him. You think as the chairman, chief executive, it's your, my responsibility to take statement? that a statement should be taken from him. A statement was taken from him in re Look, respect to that it is a routine matter. Yes. Anytime he knows that anytime anybody arrests anybody, mm -hmm. the first thing you do is give him the statement pro forma. When was he arrested? Find out. Oh. He... <laughs> On page one of Isbit one, 
it was said that he was, you invited him on the 25th day of June 1997. Is that correct? That is his own statement. What do you have? What is your own statement? As far as I am concerned, he was brought to my office. He was brief. I can't remember what date it was. You can't remember. But based on the evidence, what I did, and if I go back tomorrow, I would still dismiss him for such an offense. Yeah. Gen General, we are talking about... Please, please, General, please the, help the Commission. Now, you, the statement that was tendered is B3 from your custody was dated 26th September 1998. Is that correct? The, the, the statement you gave to your lawyer uh, you is B3. Check, you should check the statement. Please show him. Oh, show him that me. statement you brought. I'm not Give him his victory. Well, what I want you to be absolutely aware of is that I don't take statements. I know that. I was chairman, chief executive of NDLE. Yes. And the allegation so, was brought uh, to your knowledge that your officer was aiding drug barons. Is that correct? The, there's a difference between bringing that report and taking the statement. I don't take statements. Now, General, please help this commission. What am I helping the commission with? Did I have helped this country by dismissing such people who are getting double salaries, getting salaries from the government and getting salaries from drug barons. What did you rely on in dismissing the petitioner? Can you tell the commissioner the report you relied on in dismissing the commissioner? What made you to dismiss the, uh, the petitioner? What have, have, are, are the reports here? What's the report? What formed the basis of dismissing the petition? It's just based on information you get without investigating Look, uh, it. my dear lawyer, my learned friend, let me tell you. I was in the position to salvage the image of this country. And I left no stone unturned for doing it. Now, in salvaging and the just image... just wait a minute. I have no regret for anybody I dismissed in NDLE, because they were not Nigerians. They were mercenaries in Nigerian land. So in dismissing them, did you act in accordance with the law that set you up? Absolutely. Go okay. and read Decree 48. Decree 48? Yes. Of which it year? gives the chairman the powers to hire and fire. Now, General, can you tell the Commission why the dismissal of the petitioner came before the statement in SB3? I don't know which you are talking about, whether the dismissal before the report or the report before the dismissal. I don't think, I don't think you are getting your things, I mean, your facts right. Please, stay the, that's why I'm asking you, I, don't hold up anything. Tell the commission everything I, I from... I where, have nothing to hold. I have already led you to the place where a report was brought to you that your officer was aiding drug barons. And I asked you, what step did you take or what instruction did you give to your subordinates to tackle to investigate this matter? And you have not been able to take that straight through so that we know the steps you took, whether it was even in, in consonance with that Decree 48 which you acted upon. That's what we want to know. Well, as long as you are the one asking, you will not agree it's in consonance with Decree 48 because you want to have your way. Can you tell but us what you did? What I want to tell you yes. is that whatever actions I took at that appropriate time were in line with the responsibilities of my office and in the best interest of this nation. It was during my time that Nigeria's image was revamped as far as drug issues were concerned. And I mean it. Yes. And the only way is that 
you have to be a decisive leader. I was one. General, you agree with me that being a decisive leader does not mean being an autocratic leader too? It, it, it depends on what you want to term it to be. So, in effect... When, um, when I said decisive, I meant decisive. Taking decisions at the appropriate time. Like dismissing without investigation? I don't know. That is your own. Uh, for how long was the uh, petition, uh, petitioner kept in detention in Mina? I am not aware of his detention. I you are think. not aware of his detention? Yes. You are not aware of his arrest? You are not aware of his detention? And you want this commission to believe you? But you dismissed him? Look, when we started this chat, me and you, I told you, I told you, I made it clear to you. I made it clear to you that I was at the, the top of NDLE. Only people like directors and those close to me that I can easily identify. You are still going back to this question. It's not possible if I had met him, Akimo, maybe he will know me because my whiskers can identify me easily. <laughs> but I will not be able to know him. Yes, so I'm telling you nothing but the truth. I have sworn here that I will say nothing but the truth, and I'm telling you the truth. So immediately the report was brought to you, the only action you took was just to dismiss him. That's all. Is that what you want to say? No, tell the commission what you did. <laughs> Tell the committee, you want to get it straight for you, sworn by the Holy Quran. Yes, why not? Yes, tell us what you did. Immediately the report of aiding and abating the minister. What did you do? You have not been able to tell the commissioner in clear terms what action you took or what instructions I you gave. I have already told the commission in clear terms. Please. Having studied the situation, I carried out his dismissal. Dismissal. I stood on it. I haven't changed my words. I'm, I'm known to be a man of my words. I dismissed him. I'm not denying. You remember when you dismissed him? I can't remember the date now. I don't cram dates okay. of that nature. Now, and you are not aware that he was subsequently detained at all? What do you want me to answer you? How many times will I answer this question? My Lord, that's all for him at this stage. I'm I see. Thank you. Yes. Cross examination. Uh, my, my Lord, with the greatest respect, may I say I will add to the cross examination. My learned friend, instead of leading him, cross examined him, okay. uh, which is not fair. I thought he was leading him. Please, General, hmm? can you tell this? On, can you tell this honorable commission? After dismissing the petitioner, did you ever order for his detention anywhere else? I never ordered for his dissension because it was sufficient to dismiss somebody and not to follow him. That becomes something else. That would be all for him, my lord. Yes, is that your case? I, I just wanted to, because it seems that we are faced with a tale of two cities here. The, the, and you know, from what the, our council, the council to the commission is saying, you are assuming, among other things, that uh, you are expecting due process. That will also assume that we are living under the rule of the rule of law. Exactly. But we weren't. We are living under a military dictatorship. So it seems to me that a lot of the questions we are asking suppose that we were living in a civil environment and that we are governed by other rules. And the man has said that the law gave him absolute power. He emphasized his chairman and chief executive, which meant that he had the right to fire you. He has just like somebody, like the man testified that he could give you one letter that employed you 
and another letter that fired you. All those were within his powers. That's what the decree, I haven't read the decree, but he says, that's what the decree says. And I think, just like we have discovered with the case of the enormous powers that attorneys generals have, that you can go around and around in cycle. It may just be a question. It's not about goodwill. It's not about being a good man or a bad man, but it is about a terribly bad law and a bad system, which really everything else put together is that the man says he was doing a damn good job, and that damn good job meant deciding who was good and who was bad. Those were the powers that he had. So I think that, again, just like we've said about the powers of the Attorney General, that we assume that you know, people are not going to be able to do the things they're doing, but the realities are catching up with us. So I think that it is a pity. The gentleman who petitioned, the petitioner knows that he spent time in, uh, in, 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 Mina. In, in Mina, and the records are there. But also, he said, when he was taken to Mina, when they came and examined him, they said, this is the chairman's suspect. So you now had a system, and that system still exists in Nigeria, that there are suspects who belong to individuals, and you go and tell them you want the man to be detained, you want the man to be tortured, you give the instructions, and you'll be treated as an individual. So it's a very complex case, but I think it's important to understand that it was all, we are all victims of the system, and the civility we are expecting and the process we are expecting from the system was just not there. Well, we are grateful, sir, except that in this circumstance, this, the chairman did not use that. The, in the circumstance... I don't know whether I can say no, something all, about that. All he that. said, sir, all he said, I'm sorry, normally I wouldn't have come, uh, I wouldn't have come in, but after your honours uh, question and comments, I think fairness demands that, as we say, a word of two. He has already stated that after dismissing that man, he had nothing to do with him again. He left him there. Council, council, listen. The point, let, let me just clarify the point. We received, including when I was in Lagos, I received people in my office. There were people who came to my office, ex staff of NDLEA. They complained to me about arbitrariness, about abuse of power, and so on and so forth. And if you listen to people, I mean, there, there are quite a lot of people that have those kind of stories to tell. But like I said, it's not a question of a man being good or bad. The real issue is the kind of system that allowed an individual and an organization to have such enormous powers. But again, this is, this is the logic of militarism and military dictatorship. You take power by force, you decide everything else follows naturally. So I'm saying that it's not so much a question of whether he ordered the man's detention or not. The truth of the matter is that there are records. And if you go to Mina, I'm sure the man can produce records that he was detained. The man says he didn't order his detention. But the system that allows him to dismiss somebody on the spot is what I have a problem with. Unfortunately, that is part of our history. So I'm not making a judgment on him as an individual, but I'm saying that here was this system that, that, that we had in place, and unfortunately, it put too much power in the hands of just single individuals. Excuse me, please. I don't know if I can say something, my lord. Yes. Wait, wait. First and foremost, I want to point out. I don't want to make a statement, sir. First and foremost, I want us to cast our minds back hmm. to 1990, 1994. I came to NDLA in 1994 because Nigerians could no more travel freely to Europe. And it was during my office time that I brought back that respect for this country and for its citizens. Hmm. Those who might have been coming to you you were free to come to my office. Everybody was free to come to my office at that material time, when I was still in the office, to come and inquire what might have happened. Nobody commits an offense and owns up to it. It is not normal with human beings. They always like to cover up. As far as I'm concerned, you said I said I did, I did a good job. I'm going to tell you I did an excellent job. And I mean it. <laughs> and you as a, 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 a bishop, I, whatever, 
Father. Reverend Father. Oh, Reverend Father, sorry please. I will I will draw bishop. I say Reverend Father. Yes. Reverend Father. I expected you to oppose drug peddlers and those who are their cohorts hmm. vehemently because that is what can easily destroy this nation. A nation without the youth is no more a nation because continuity will be severe. And I fought that to the net because I knew what was coming to Nigeria. And I'm happy I did it. I have no regrets whatsoever. I'm telling everybody here. I have no regrets whatsoever for what I did in NDLD. If I have the opportunity again, if I want to do it, I will repeat the same process. Just a minute. And I will request you, Reverend Father, to pray for our success. And not to tell, for you to listen to people who are destroying this nation. Because drugs destroy, and they destroy absolutely. Well, you, you didn't try hard. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, counsel on both sides, we haven't seen this law, this almighty law. Is it available? My Lord, I can tell you, there is no such law. law. Decree 48. Where is it now? Let does not a, give anybody a, power of a, absolute dismissal. I'm a customer. They have, they have extraordinary power. I'm right. a customer. There is no such power, sir. I can assure you. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm his, sorry. I'm his customer. I, oh. Decree 48, sir. Well, everybody um, has a copy of the decree. No, we don't have it, yeah. How I'm can fine. we charge you that knowing what the decree says? NDLA decree. I, I'm sorry, my lord. I think my learned friend... I'm because under decree 2, we know the absolute powers they have. If they suspect... If you look like somebody who is a danger to the state, they arrest you. Yeah, it's there. What about here? What about this? I, I, I'm sorry, my lord. Uh, Nobody has a decree here. No, no, no. But, but my, my lord, I can supply your lordship with a copy, but I am afraid my learned friend, Femi Falana, uh, I, I do not know whether he's taking over my I just case want to see the powers. I'm a member of the bar. bar. No, no, wait. See, the powers are there. If it's acting under the law, he's all right. He's yeah, justified. Yeah, yeah. What, what because one like? question I asked during address was the dismissal justified exactly. or justifiable? Exactly. If the law says so, it's yes, justifiable. Sir. But how can you address me without the law? My lord. Can we take a date for the address? We will bring you a copy of the. We're not decree. ready for the address today. No, no, my lord. My lord, the, the issue of the dismissal has already been overtaken by events to, some, to the extent that SB2, which the petitioner has tendered, recommended his reinstatement, even though they have... SB2, the the law under uh, which they lord, acted. Yes, my lord. We are the law of, gives him all the powers he said he My lord, decides. there will be no such law giving him that kind of power. Have you seen the is, law? My lord, he just referred to it here. Will we will we get a copy of the law. If I make, make Where is the petitioner? I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I, I find it intriguing that he has not thought it fit to, to join NDLA. You know, if you are seeking reliefs, why hasn't he joined him? I mean, join NDLA as a party, get them to come and stay their own side. This man, whether he acted rightly or wrongly, acted in his official capacities as for and on behalf of NDLEA. Oh, if I in a regular court, he probably could go and plead under the Public Officer oh, Protection Act that he's yes. protected. My Lord. I mean, so the reliefs ought to, I mean, uh, the, the NDLEA should have been some more to come and state. Yes. You know, so they're, they're on side. My Lord, the to issue, help him. Yes, exactly. The issue that came before your lordship is here is detention for 17 months, not the issue of his dismissal, yeah, per se. There has been so much hammering on dismissal. Uh, yeah, dismissal, I mean, that dismissal. does not distract from the actual, uh, uh, this thing we are talking about, yeah. is a violation of his rights. Well, you know, you are dragging us back to most of the cases we had. Because he's the head of the institution, did he put him there for 17 months? No. Did my he? Lord, as my Lord, a person? My Lord, he personally? No. My Lord, he said he, but he, a report was given to him that the petitioner was... And he dismissed him. No, exactly. My Lord, he did not... He and invited he didn't know him. anything about what else happened to him. My Lord, he cannot because SB3, which he tendered, shows that he took a statement from him a year, at, uh, 15 months after. He tendered it, SB3. 
No, but his lawyer attended it. He gave it to his lawyer. He cannot deny it. Is it a personal thing or office? My lord, is the office which he was heading. It was the office which he was heading. He cannot deny. By that SB3 which he attended, that, he cannot deny that even issue of detention. Yes. The same argument. Anybody is head of state, anything that happens, he is responsible. With the greatest respect, may I humbly pray for this Friday for address, my lord. Subject right, to lordship's committee. People are not ready to address. Yeah. My lord, the 19th is loaded. We have a dear case. We have address a Biola case. Ad what date for address? Okay, my lord, we are suggesting 2nd of August. Seven what? Second. Why so long? Lord, what we is have special that? hearing this. What is here that you need so much time to address? Yeah, my Lord, if my Lord pleases, we can. First of all, if you look at the law, see whether he has the powers. If he hasn't got the powers, then we know. And since he didn't call uh, the, the, the drug enforcement, if, well, NDLA, well, uh, it makes it so difficult. My Lord, Unless he did in, in his personal capacity. Which I don't think he did. My Lord, in the circumstance, that's why I'm applying for a second. Because we now intend, since the general is denying knowledge of his detention. Is it we second, are, second August? Is that all right for you? Second August. We are not, not for address, my Lord. We intend to call officially the NDLA people to produce the records relating to the. I thought you said agree addresses. No, he was the one who said, I have, we have not closed our case. We is called him. Yes, I'm now applying that the matter be adjourned, that we officially invite the NDLA to come and state the records, my Lord. My Lord, since this is a fact-finding commission, we will not be opposing, but I hope it is not fair for them to be bringing their witnesses piecemeal. When you decide you faulted somewhere, you say you bring this. When you decide you faulted somewhere, well, how long will it continue? I hope we will still be within the, the, the time given to this honorable commission. But my Lord, may I humbly suggest... My Lord, may I humbly suggest the first day of August. For what? For address or for calling for the witnesses? Uh, maybe we'll say for calling for the witnesses and an and address. Is that all right? That's all right. Man. First of August? Yes, the second of August. Second. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, my Lord. My, my Lord, with humility, I'm, I'm before the court to appeal on the second. I'm sorry, sir. You're asking for first? Yes, first, my Lord. First, then? I'm good, my Lord. And then when you are preparing your address, we like to know one, can he dismiss summarily under that law? If he can, that answers it. Second, detention for 17 months, who ordered it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Was that justifiable under that law? Taking it against the general, I think he's a to myopic. He was acting in an official capacity. As the court pleases. We are most obliged, my lord. Thank you very much, General. With respect, sir.